And now, it's time to explore an even greater jolt to Diaper Boot's life. Truly, a tale of two collisions. Whoa! Nothing like a cataclysmic explosion of an aerobium reactor at the hands of an evil mastermind to set the stage, or beach, for the effects of sudden impact. Sudden impact to the brain, that is. Traumatic brain injury is a permanent or temporary neurological impairment from direct or indirect injury to the brain. A mild TBI is also known as a concussion. A traumatic impact to the brain, represented here by the cracked and traumatized appearing jar that seems to be housing a brain, a brain with a mustache vaguely resembling the facial hair of Dr. Brian? Clearly, there's a story here, but for now, keep the neuronal-looking cracks of this mind in mind to remember that the rapid force of a traumatic impact can lead to axonal injury. In mild TBI, if axonal injury occurs, it's reversible unlike in more severe TBIs in which axonal damage is irreversible. And just as the water and debris are cascading from this damaged pipe, traumatic impact triggers a neurometabolic cascade in the brain, releasing excitatory neurotransmitters willy-nilly and disrupting the normal sodium, potassium, and calcium gradients. The resulting post-concussive symptoms are reflected in our amphibious friend who's holding his head in pain, tremulous and tearful. Similarly, post-concussive symptoms may include headache, mood changes, sleep abnormalities, cognitive deficits, and even seizure. He appears confused and shaken, maybe stirred. He might need a minute or two. Though not more than 30. Concussion is generally defined as a loss of consciousness of less than 30 minutes, though it may not occur at all, hence the wait 30 minutes before swimming sign a Glasgow coma score of 13 or higher, symbolized by this number 13 lifeguard tower, and can have post-traumatic amnesia up to one day, shown here as the glimpse of sunny skies as the day passes. Moderate TBIs will have a GCS score of less than 12, for which we have the more derelict number 12 lifeguard tower, and have a longer period of both loss of consciousness and amnesia. The most severe category of TBI presents with a GCS of less than 8, and if there are accompanying intracranial injuries, complicated is added to the TBI classification. The chaos of the impact settles with time, and concussions usually resolve within 2-4 to four weeks. However, during this time, there's an energy crisis in the brain, much like this power plant crisis, as more energy is required and less is available. This is a critical period. Just as a second insult to the power plant would result in more catastrophic damage, a second insult to the brain during this time can result in a much worse outcome. As this clock warns, treatment for the concussed patient is physical and cognitive rest for one to two days before a stepwise return to school, work, and sports. Just a few restful days of floating your brain in a jar or whatever receptacle you feel appropriate. If concussion symptoms persist beyond the expected course, generally more than a month or so, then you're dealing with post-concussive syndrome, hence that distant wave still rolling post-impact. As if this brain, er, sorry, Dr. Brian, hasn't had a rough enough day already, he's just been struck again with a grandfather clock, reminding us that time is never on our side, and that there's evidence that repeated chronic head blows can lead to accelerated neurodegeneration, termed chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Before you go ordering CAT scans for every brain in a glass jar, this slightly, shall we say, abnormal appearing cat is a reminder to only order a CT scan if acute intracranial abnormalities are suspected. Concussion does not routinely require imaging. What may be required, however, following the initial post-concussion rest period is a multidisciplinary approach to treatment. Healing from a TBI often requires the support of physical and occupational therapy, psychiatry, neurology, and neuropsychology. All right, before we leave Diaper Boot and Dr. Brian to recover from their head-to-head -head introductions and piece together what comes next, let's briefly reflect on today's trauma. A concussion is a biomechanical stressor to the brain, triggering a neurometabolic cascade. 
Concussion can result in symptoms including headaches, mood changes, sleep abnormalities, impaired processing speed, seizures, and cognitive deficits. Concussion or mild TBI may have a loss of consciousness of less than 30 minutes, a Glasgow coma score of 13 or higher, and can have post-traumatic amnesia that lasts up to one day. Moderate TBIs will have a GCS score of less than 12, while the most severe category of TBI can have a GCS of less than 8. An energy crisis is present during the healing period, 2 to 4 weeks, and a second insult, injury, or stress during this time can lead to poor outcomes. Treatment includes initial physical and cognitive rest for 24 to 48 hours post-impact. Post-concussive syndrome is persistence of concussion symptoms beyond the expected course, generally greater than one month. There's evidence that repeated head blows can lead to accelerated neurodegeneration, termed chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Concussion doesn't require imaging unless acute intracranial injuries are suspected. And that brings us to the end of this collision course on TBI. But heads up, because the impact of this encounter is just the beginning.